your Jesus encounter. Tell us what happened after you went home from the restaurant. I went home from the restaurant. She said, uh, you're not going to go with me to the grocery store. I said, get me home. And she took me home. I ran into the house. Her and the little our toddler went on to the uh, grocery store. I ran into the house. I ran into my den. I fell down face first in the carpet, just screaming and crying. Oh, God, I'm, I'm, I am crazy. I am literally crazy. I'll never be able to go out of my house again. I can't even go out to a restaurant and eat. Oh, God, you've got to come and help me. At that moment, Sean, I never felt so hopeless and helpless in my life. For days preceding that, I, I knew I was in trouble, and I thought, I'll get over this. I'll get over this. I can get myself out of this mess. But that day was a reality. I can't get out of this. I'm in trouble. And I just poured. I just screamed and hollered in my carpet, laying face first. Oh, God, I'm losing my mind. I am losing my mind. You've got to come and help me. Oh, God, I'm going crazy. I'm going to go to a mental hospital. They'll come get me. I'll never see my little boy again. And uh, it was in the midst of that crying that I sensed a presence in the room. And I, I thought, I looked up. I was laying face first on the floor. And I looked up. And when I did, I saw feet and sandals in front of me. And I thought my neighbor saw me run in because we had neighbors that were good friends across the street. They saw me run in, so I didn't want to be on the floor with him there. And I lifted up on my hands and knees, and when I did up, uh, lifted up and lifted my head, I looked into the face of the Lord Jesus, and he was standing in my den, and it was just like a human standing there. And and I'm, I'm young in the ministry. I know nothing about visions. I knew nothing about the spirit world. I'm young. I didn't grow up in that side of the church world. And, and, uh, and I never will forget what he said to me. He said, Eddie, what would you have me do for you? And uh, I immediately looked to my left to think I've died. I have died. I've, I've ended my life because the thoughts were coming, Sean, just in your life. This is no way to live. You're never going to get any better just in your life. So I thought I've ended my life. I'm in heaven. But I, I looked to my left. I remember looking to my left, and it was my couch, my old couch that we would bought at Discount Furniture. And the first thing that popped in my mind is, I know heaven's got better couches than this. This can't be heaven. And then it dawned on me. This was a true vision, and the Lord had was there. And uh, he said, Eddie, what would you have me do for you? And I just simply said, I... You know, people have said, why didn't you ask him a bunch of things? Well, when you're in the middle of the war, all you think about is the enemy shooting at you. And I just said, Lord Jesus, these thoughts are killing me. And uh, when I said that, his response was, Eddie, I told you thoughts were as vapors. They have no power. And I remembered then a couple of months earlier, one day crying out in prayer. And I kept hearing on the inside this word, vapors, vapors. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how the Lord spoke. I was young and I kicked it out thinking, that's crazy. That's another one of them crazy thoughts. I am losing my mind, vapors. But the Lord said to me, I told you, thoughts are as vapors and they have no power. And when he said that, he reached down to the side of my head and I could feel the pressure up against the side of my head. And he pulled out what looked to be a banner that you would put across a road announcing a carnival or some kind of big event. He pulled this banner out and he held it out far enough for me to see. And it said, you are demon possessed because that's the thought that had locked into my mind. And he blew it and it disappeared like a vapor. And then he reached down immediately again and pulled out another banner and he pulled it out far enough for me to see. And it said, God does not love you because that's another thought that had been locked into my mind. And uh, he blew it and it disappeared. And then he said to me, Eddie, there's your problem. And he looked to the corner. And when I looked to where he was looking, there were two monkey looking creatures. Now, I knew nothing about demons. I, I'd never read anything on that in Bible school or uh, in where I was taught Bible and religious classes. I didn't read anything about that. But I, once you, what I realize now, once you get in the realm of the spirit, you know things that you normally don't know. Remember what John said on the Isle of Patmos, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and he saw 
revelations that he didn't had never seen before. And he knew things he, he hadn't been taught. So I just knew at that moment when I looked over that, that those two imp monkey looking creatures were demons. I don't know how tall they were because they were huddled in the corner. They weren't very tall. But every time Jesus would look at them, they would shrivel in fear. And I could see their hair shaking on their bodies. And what was amazing to me is I was in the presence of devils, but I wasn't fearful at all. For the first time in three months, the fear, the torment, the paranoia was not on me. I was at total peace. It was the devils that were fearful. And every time that Jesus looked at them, they would shriek in fear and hide in the corner and wouldn't even look at him face to face. And the Lord Jesus said to me, Eddie, there's your problem. And, uh, and looked back at me and smiled so sweetly. And uh, he was gone. And, uh, and I, I'm asked all the time, well, I guess you never had a thought problem after that. No, they didn't leave. The thoughts were still there. People say, well, didn't he, didn't he do something about it? No, he didn't say that. He said, Eddie, there's your problem. He didn't say that's my problem. He didn't cast them out. He didn't even speak to them. He just looked at me and said, Eddie, there's your problem. And it was from that moment that I began realizing from the word of God that it's our responsibility as believers to take authority over the enemy. Jesus has already done everything he's going to do about the devil. He defeated him on the cross. Uh, he's taking care of the sin problem. It's our job now to use the authority that he's given us. And over the next uh, 12 to 18 months, it was a process of me learning how to use my authority and take back control of my thought life.